Welcome back to the big board real quick. Thought we'd take a look now at, where are we at? I think we're in turn four, which is an odd turn in uh, battles uh, in the east from decision games. It's an odd turn because the supply situation changes for the Germans. The Germans have spent the first three turns with full attack supply, and in fact, uh, so have uh, the Soviets, I believe. But the interesting thing now is based on the scenario card, which, do I have it handy? I'm gonna have to move the camera. Uh, based on the scenario card, turn four, it appears for the Germans that they just have general supply. That's my understanding of the way the game is, uh, the scenario is structured here for Uman Pocket. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a, I've got a piece of uh, blueberry skin stuck in my throat. Uh, very inappropriate and unprofessional for a war, for a, a wargaming video blog magazine. No, we're just a blog. We're just a blogger, video blogger, blogger. Right, so uh, here we go. Let me just read this to you because it's interesting how this impacts the game. Now, for the Soviets, they uh, all, all their HQs, one, turn one through three, are in attack supply, but then turn five, so they have that gap as well, they can put one HQ in attack supply, and that continues every turn. Every turn, one HQ can be selected to be in attack supply, assuming that it's eligible and has a line of supply and all that nonsense. For the Germans, one through three, attack supply for everybody. It's, there's one exception, but don't worry about that. But then game turn five, they have these reinforcements that are just off screen. Down. There, these guys here. They come on the board. They're going to have attack supply for three turns. And, uh, but in turn, but everyone else will do the same thing as the Soviets and will have one attack supply eligible formation per turn. I hope that makes sense. So what does that mean? Well, uh, the interesting thing is that with general supply, you everyone gets full movement just like in attack supply. But uh, in the mech move phase, it's only quarter of your movement points. So an 8 MP tank regiment is gonna get to move just two movement points instead of four movement points. So this is a, a, it's an interesting way to, I guess, deftly represent the, the lack, the, the momentum petering out, the ability for spare parts and fuel and ammo and all that sort of stuff to reach those uh, most forward of units uh, for the ability for them to be uh, able to be supplied and resupplied and by, by using this uh, notion of attack supply and general supply. Uh, you cannot overrun. So that's another interesting uh, uh, caveat for general supply. And then your attack strength is going to be half. Defense strength will be normal. Uh, combat support shifts are all halved, rounding down, etc., etc. So a uh, significant problem for the Germans as they head into turn four as uh, we have seen with the movement here. Uh, they've now moved up. The other thing that, uh, hits, that hits here is the disengagement rule begins turn four as well. So once you're adjacent to the enemy, you're, you're stuck there, you're gonna need to fight. I believe that's right, I'll have to double check that, but, and I'll, I'll make a note in the comments if that is incorrect, but I believe that's the, the situation. So what we've got here is uh, 9th Panzer has pushed uh, deep into the, the backfield, uh, creating a gap here that's, you know, a good 10 hexes wide. And 11th Panzer is screening on the right, 16th Panzer screening on the left. We've got uh, 111th and 75th Infantry are going to come down and try and capture this city here, which is VP Hex. Uh, Ideally, clearing the way for Kempf and his guys in Third Panzer Corps to either race down this road and collect VPs, or they'll follow the track here and head down south and try and pick up VP locations here. Uh, with the goal, I think being, I think there's seven we've got to pick up and something like that to, to make it a decent sort of victory for the uh, 
for the Germans. Uh, and then over on the far side, not a lot's going to happen over here because we're, you know, we're not going to have a lot of supply. But the important point is where that black cross is, is we're uh, going to try and exit our forces off the map. And that will uh, not penalize us 1VP if we get those forces off the map. So there's a little bit of uh, 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 manipulation has to happen there to get those forces off. Now, the Soviets are obviously going to try and interrupt that. There's, they've sent a full mech division to uh, mess with that action. And everyone else has gone into disengage mode and pull back. Uh, there's a, a rule in this scenario that allows you to pull back uh, and double your movement rate. Uh, you can't attack or anything like that, but it allows you to double your movement rate. So the, the Soviets have managed to pull some units back. Others have been left behind. Here we've got some units out of supply. They're going to be halved. So that'll that'll help sort of even things up. If I do make attacks here, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to work that out. It, it'll be kind of like an even attack. And we will get some concentric bonuses and stuff like that, but we'll have to work all that out. Anyway, so I just thought to share that with you real quick. What this does, the, the point of this video actually, before I disengage here, uh, the, the point of the video is that this drives the game into less of a kill units, stack bodies type of thing, and more of a maneuver game because we really, as the Germans now with, out attack supply, we have to concentrate our forces, pick the right formation to be uh, in attack supply, to be attacking exactly where we need them to be so that we can continue to push our forces down towards VP locations. Otherwise, we're going to get caught in and bogged down in uh, attrition based fighting at uh, disadvantageous odds and stuff like that. So uh, I'm really enjoying the interplay of the rules and the mechanics for the rules here and the specific scenario rules that are that are tweaking and tuning the activity of the battle. I think if I you know, have done <coughs> my modest amount of reading on this particular battle, I think the way the rules are structured so far uh, uh, aiding the representation of the history quite well. So uh, <clears throat> full marks to uh, Anthony for uh, making this module so far. You know, I, I can't say that it's all awesome and fabulous yet because we haven't uh, got all the way through it, but Anthony Burkett has done a nice job here and Decision Games have done a very a very good job with the production quality. Uh, we can, we'll have a conversation about components at some later point. I've got a few bits and pieces to talk about there, but otherwise, uh, uh, in general, feeling pretty good about it. All right, that's uh, video two down. Uh, we're, where are we at? I think we are at combat phase for turn four. So we're going to go knock that out, <clears throat> get into the mech move phase, let Soviets do their thing, and then we'll come into turn five, which is when we get some reinforcements for both sides, and that'll be interesting as well. All right, all the best.